All right, I think we're about to get started. It's, should it be lighting up? I feel alive. And I think we're running. All right, fantastic. Come on, little magic computer. You may think I'm on, but I'm not sure that I'm on yet. Check one, two, three. Check one, two, three. Yeah, but do you guys see me? Yeah, but am I really on? <laughs> you guys can see me. All right, well, for some reason, I can't see me, so we'll just assume that I'm on, and I'm gonna hope that the guys in the background will say something to me if there's big troubles here. Okay. All right, yeah, so for some reason, guys, I am not showing up on my own camera. So uh, anyway, hi, everybody. Welcome to the show here. My name is Mike Myers, and this is the Monday edition of the live stream Ask Mike Anything. The goal of this live stream is no longer just for those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus, although fingers are crossed. I heard that China had another spike all of a sudden, so I'm a little paranoid about that. Uh, but the goal of this live stream is to help people who are studying for their CompTIA, primarily A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Security+. Plus. This is an opportunity to ask me questions directly on any of those topics. Now, not only do we do CompTIA A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Security+, plus, but we can do another, a, a broader cross-section of uh, certifications and even non-IT certifications, all I claim no great expertise that stayed up on the latest uh, cloud cert, but uh, we got some pretty good ideas. Uh, man, it's so weird that you guys can see me, yet I don't show up on my little thing. So I'm not gonna worry about it, because you guys said I was there. Put a mirror in front of me, there you go, I like that one. All right, so anyway, here's how this works. You ask me questions and I answer them. What we do is we start here at two o'clock Central Daylight Time, I'm in Houston, Texas, and we will go till three o'clock or until the questions run out. So if we run out of questions, no big deal, we end a little early, we do it all the time, it's no problem. I wanna be here for you guys. Now, in order to ask questions, you want to type them into the chat window. Now, one of the things you might want to keep in mind is take a look at that chat window. Look up at the top. Does it say top chat? Well, if it does, hit the pull down and switch that over to live chat. We're going to have a competition here, and that may help you. Also, uh, to the right of the live chat where you get the three dots, he doesn't know how to use the three dots, sorry. Uh, go ahead and make sure to toggle your timestamps so you can actually see your timestamps. I find that very, very helpful as well. So. With that, why doesn't I show up? That is freaking me out. All right, let's see who's all on today. Tolowitz here, Connor, Andre, of course, Andre. Andre, Mars Monster, which looks like a new name to me. Welcome aboard, Bahamut's here. Chris Kent, Mars Monster. Mars Monster is a chatty fellow. Hiru, Cinderfly. Gibson Onakawu, man, why you guys, everybody should just be called Smith, or better yet, Myers. Uh, but everybody's all going, Catherine, Morgan, and uh, more people scrolling in. All right, well, anyway, so uh, it's been an interesting day to say the least. Hey, I'm down 45 pounds now. You know, am I starting to look a little thinner? <laughs> yeah, we're getting there, guys. We've got a lot more to go, but I'm, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit better and uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I uh, had a nice weekend, actually pretty darn nice weekend, quiet weekend. I love a quiet weekend. I uh, sitting around drinking good Provence rosé wine and talking with friends. It was absolutely magnificent. Loved it absolutely to death. <coughs> All right. Uh, so I'm looking for questions. Uh, okay, a couple of uh, things that you might want to keep in mind. Uh, number one, uh, we got a, a couple of announcements. Uh, Nathan English, where are you, man? Nathan, uh, you won last week 
uh, but we haven't heard from you, so I'm hoping he shows back up. Um, we want to get you your prize, but remember, in order to get your prizes here, if you win, then you send us an email. If you're new, don't worry about it. We'll explain it. It's actually pretty straightforward. Also, do keep in mind that just because you're nice enough to be here today, we're offering a 50% discount on combinations of uh, my ebook and uh, my practice test. So let's say you're studying for the Network Plus. You can get my ebook, Network Plus ebook, and the Network Plus practice questions. We call our practice questions the total tester here at Total Seminars. You can get all that for half off. Look guys, I'm already pretty much the cheapest that's out there and uh, put 50% off on that. My prices are insane. So please take advantage of that. Now in order to take advantage of this deal, you have to head over to my website, that's www.totalsem.com. Go on over to the merchant area, throw, a, say, a Network Plus ebook. Remember, it can't be physical books, it's got to be the ebooks. Put the Network Plus ebook and the Network Plus uh, Total Tester into your cart. And just when you check out, just type in the magic code DNA. Do not authorize. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, Dave Rush does this stuff. I, 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 I'm, out, I'm out of control, but he does a good job, so I'm happy. And you will automatically get 50% off. So these are ridiculously low prices, and that's what you do because I love you so very, very much. Buddy Jesus. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that we do have a happy, healthy, happy Discord channel. Uh, a lot of the people you see on here tend to head over to the Discord channel as well. Uh, Dave Rush will put a link right into the chat window to link to the unofficial Mike Myers Discord channel. Guys, I do not own or control this Discord channel. My good friend Siegfried Vanderwee does. He does a great job on it. But if he says something that you don't like or whatever, it's like that, don't blame me. I literally have no control. But uh, so far, so good. Uh, everybody seems to be pretty thick-skinned group. Well, it's not like we're saying horrible things. It's just that, you know, people are... People are so sensitive today. All right. It is so weird that I cannot see this stream. It's a little bit frustrating. All right. Um, let's look for some questions here. Okay. So this is from Andrew Hutz. Thank you, Andrew. Um, Mike, and this is at 159, so just before we started. Mike, why did you switch from saying Takakis Plus in, sec in 501 to saying all the letters individually in 508? Honestly, because I probably forgot. Andrew, you got to keep in mind, when I'm doing these videos, I don't use the script. I'm just talking to people the way I would talk to them about these topics. And my opinion changes a little bit on things back and forth. Probably the most important thing you learn from that, Andrew, is that it doesn't matter. Uh, I get all wound up about people trying to memorize acronyms. You know, what does DNS stand for? What does DHCP stand for? What does SM and SMTP stand for? I honestly couldn't tell you exactly what a lot of these stand for because you'll never be tested on it. You'll never get a CompTIA question that says, what does Takakis Plus stand for? Because nobody cares. Understand what Takakis is, right? Understand that it's a Cisco authentication AAA uh, tool. It's a great way instead of you got, you know, if you got like 18 switches and 22 routers and you have to log into each one of them just to do anything, Takakis makes life a lot easier. So uh, I never worry what an acronym stands for. Um, it's, it's just not important. Don't worry about it. But the, the right answer is, Andrew, to be completely honest with you, if you were to say to me, why did I do that? The real answer is, I don't know. <laughs> like I tell the IRS every year, I forgot. All right. Seal skin would make good inner linings for muck lux. Okay. Is that some secret code? Is Mars Monster trying to communicate with me in a secret way? Mars Monster, the pearl is in the river. If I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? <laughs> Thank you, Monty Python. All right, moving, come on, quick. Can we get a little bit serious here? Good Lord. Mm, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Put a mirror in front of you, it still makes me laugh. 
Mars Monster, I don't know who you are, but you're making me laugh. Johnny Five, salute from Thailand. Thailand? What time is it in Thailand, man? All right. I got to turn off Discord because people are jumping in the Discord channel. <clears throat> Don Odinga, wish your lectures were all live. Aren't they all live in a way? Doesn't it feel like I'm right there with you? We are one together. Theodore Georgialis, Mike, what do you think about overclocking and a custom water cool at a PC? All right, let's talk about both of those. Uh, Billy Reed, I just saw your question. I, I, I won't miss that. Uh, guys, if you type in a question and I miss it, just type it again, we'll get to it, I promise. I mean, very rarely do we end with me missing questions. It can happen from time to time, but you know, if it do, don't worry. Uh, okay, so what was the question? What do I think about overclocking? Well, <coughs> my biggest problem with overclocking is you just don't get a whole lot of bang for the buck with it. Um, I mean, not to date myself too much, actually I'm dating myself a lot, but like the first systems I overclocked were like 200 megahertz chips that we got to go over 500. So, I mean, we're talking about a 250% improvement in clock speed. Today, if you get 10% improvement, that's good. And I gotta be honest with you, for most people, they're not gonna be able to notice a 10% improvement on their systems. Eh, maybe a few people could, but it's, it's if I, Oop, I just lost my mic. <clears throat> if I have to use a benchmarking tool to tell that my overclocking has sped up my system, I don't think it's worth it personally. It's an interesting thing to do, and as long as you've got the right kind of processors, most of the processors today are pretty forgiving on overclocking, and you're going to be patient, and you're going to have a good, probably the most important thing is have the right motherboard, which basically means ASUS more often than not. Um, uh, there's other ones that are good, but if I'm going to be overclocking, I'm almost certainly going to be using Asus, especially one of the gaming boards that has the overclocking capabilities really built into it, you know, where I can really adjust RAM timings, for example, which is absolutely critical for any kind of serious overclocking. Um, and also, like, uh, Gigabyte also makes some pretty good uh, overclockables, mainly with their dual bias kind of setup. So if I mess something up. I mean, I can reset any system, but it's a lot easier if I've got a secondary bias to go to, but it's not a requirement. And what do I think about, uh, what do I think about water cooling? It's pretty. Um, you know, it's fun. <laughs> I don't think it's particularly necessary. Uh, if you're overclocking, you probably want to be looking at a more aggressive cooling system, of course. But for most of us regular Joes who are just running regular systems, uh, liquid cooling looks fantastic. And hey, it is better to look good than to feel good. You know what I mean? Uh, but I don't think it's really necessary. But it is pretty, especially when you put little bit metallic flakes in the liquid so it's sparkly. Because sometimes it's, it's important to look good. Uh, okay, who, I missed somebody's questions here. I, I want to make sure I didn't miss it. Uh, Billy Reed at 208. I'm after some help, please. That's what we're here for, Billy. Does anyone know of anywhere I can get free A-plus practice exams? Billy Reed, you can get them right here, my friend. Billy Reed, every day we have a, a competition where I give away practice tests. Uh, these are my total test or practice tests, which I consider the gold standard for any uh, CompTIA uh, training. And uh, you can get them right here. I, I give away a free set every day. Dave Rush speaks Arabic. That's interesting. Don Odinga, can you do another longer video on Wireshark? I'm on lecture 66. I love your lectures. No, I can't, Don. But you know what I can do that's better than that, Don? Why don't you ask me questions about Wireshark? What, what do you want to know about Wireshark? Uh, and then if you give me something like that, then I'm more than glad to address that. It, hopefully it's something I can address online here. If not, we can, uh, I can always put together a little shtick for you too. Uh, a little shtick. I would make a presentation, which I would still get live here. Everybody else could see it. Uh, so, but Don, yeah, the important thing here is that 
If you like Wireshark, that means there's something you're looking for. So tell me what you're looking for in Wireshark and then I'll be able to help you out. Honestly though, Wireshark is literally a minute to understand and a lifetime to master kind of tool set. It's, uh, it's pretty cool though. Guns? Catherine Legrande. Jared's here. Okay, now we're talking. Johnny Five, two in the morning in Taiwan. Good man. Uh, Rainbow Jesse, good to see you again, my brother. Hey, or, or sister, how do you want to do a quick lesson on, do you want to do a quick lesson on binary numbers? Do I want to? No, <laughs> don't. Uh, but I, Rainbow, you got to ask, what, what do you want to know about binary? And the reason we use binary in computers is because computers have, they're either on or off, and they have little wires that either have a voltage on it or they don't have a voltage on it. That's the cornerstone by which all IT works. And, uh, I mean, what about binary? It's ones and zeros. You want me to, here, you want me to see me count to 10 in binary? Zero, one, 10. There we go. You got you to get that body movement in there, too. <clears throat> and I did two shows on Wireshark. I, did, I actually did two here. That's great. Uh, Dave Rush posted in the chat there, I've got two Wireshark shows right here on the Total Seminars channel, right here on YouTube. And uh, you're welcome to look at those. Perhaps that will help you as well. Jared, good evening to the great Mike Strame. <coughs> There's Tolowit. I didn't see you earlier, man. Eloy Jehusam. Mike, I need you to give a definition of computer laboratory I have never heard of. <laughs> My friend, I'm not quite sure what you're asking there. Um, I, I'm glad to help. Try, try phrasing your question a little bit more. That's helpful for me, but I apologize. I'm not quite sure what that means. Multicating client from Dubai. Multicate. Don is saying, I, <laughs> I apologize, guys. I'm having a little trouble with a few of these. Uh, Tolowit, do you have an old pair of headphones that have deteriorating? I do. Oh, my God. Do I have that crap on my ear again? I had totally have a, it's a nice, it's a big old razor headset, but the ears are deteriorating. And because I, my camera isn't working, I can't see. Now you guys got me self-conscious. Now, I'm shot. Oh, there's lots of little pieces of black patent leather falling off. Thanks for warning me there, Dave and Andrew, that I got black earphone junk all over my ears. Uh, multicasting. Multicasting client from Dubai. Okay. I understand what that means, but then, Don, it's, it's okay, man. It's all right. This happens all the time. Uh, if you have a question there, just to find it a little bit better. <clears throat> Connor Wellman, man, it is old home week. Mike, our small law office moving. I, I knew. What is a good Soho router you would recommend for us office with five employees? Uh, most of the Asus, most of the Asus. You only have five employees, man. You could use you could use a Raspberry Pi and tweak it up. You're just not asking much throughput on that. Um, even with the law office where you want something that's well established. I, uh, you mentioned the ASUS, uh, the uh, RT86U. I think the new one is the 88. That's the one with the uh, AX on there. There's even another level of Wi-Fi that's starting to come out, BE or something like that. I, 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 uh, I wouldn't worry about that one for many years. But I do. I, uh, Asus for uh, home routers. Uh, the Asus I've got running at my house, which is my, I, I have the home router that comes from uh, AT&T, but then behind that is my Asus, and that thing has run for a year and a half. No resets, no nothing, which for somebody like me is pretty impressive. I, I can't say anything better than that about it. Uh, 
Don Odinga, Mike, I started with Network Plus. Do you advise I take A Plus or Security Plus thereafter? Don, don't take any certifications. Go get a job, all right? So in general, most people consider that you do A Plus, Network Plus, Security Plus. But I don't care about that. I'd rather you just work. <laughs> just go get a job. I, ver I get very, and Don, I'm not saying this is you, but I get this, I get this a lot from people. And I see people that they start collecting certifications instead of getting a job. And often I find that people are really reticent to work. Uh, and again, Don, I'm not, blaming, I'm not saying this is you at all. Please don't take this personally. But it is a concern of mine. Uh, so assuming you're already working, I'm just going to pretend you are. If you have Network Plus, you probably ought to take a look at Security Plus. Yes, we're going to be giving stuff away here, guys. Hang on. Trey Dilla, that's a new name. NSX logo. Uh, hi, Mike. H how about explaining between GPG and PGP, and what is the difference between the two? Well, PGP is the original Pretty Good Privacy. Pretty Good Privacy was primarily a tool, at least the way I looked at it, PGP was a disk encryption tool more than anything else for me. What made PGP particularly attractive, notice I'm using past tense, what made PGP, is PGP even still being made? I don't think it is. It's been a while since I've looked at it. Bear with me just a minute. It's been a while. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think PGP is being developed anymore and, it, and probably doesn't need to be. Uh, it's encryption software. What PGP came out many years ago, 1991 when they originally came out, came out was the first time we had disk encryption. Uh, PGP had a couple of small problems with it in terms of some, uh, it was a little bit hackable, but boy, it had some great features. Like for example, the original PGP uh, had this feature. Now, obviously you have to unlock your drive one way or another, usually by typing in a password during the boot process, but you could type in like a fake password and it would look like it's opening up the system. So if a guy's got a gun to your head, it had a lot of cool features like that. Uh, GPG is a little bit of a different animal. Um, GPG pretty much replaced PGP. This was years ago, more than, more than five years ago. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it basically does the same thing. Um, PGP had a little bit of an issue. In fact, for one of the things that people didn't like about PGP is that it was completely uh, command line. So especially if you're a Windows user, uh, GPG is also uh, completely, as far as I know, it is completely command line as well. And you know, today Windows you know, has pretty good encryption built into it these days and stuff. I don't really see those tools. The one thing that is nice because they're open source it's hard to find somebody to crack it. Uh, theoretically, if you were being a really bad person, the FBI could call Microsoft and uh, have access to an encrypted drive, although I don't think that's true. Uh, but you know, you'll, still see, you'll still see them used out there. Even PGP, which I, I'm actually had to pull up Wikipedia, which hasn't been updated since 2018, uh, is still po pretty popular out there. But they're the same animal. Uh, well, one was originally developed by uh, one group, and then uh, GPG is just the or is the open version. Oh, good. Thank this. Uh, I also want to let you guys know uh, we've got two great speakers coming up, and they both happen to be ladies. Yes. Uh, so on May second, we've got. Uh, Jessica Dickerson, and we're going to be here talking about go get a job. About two weeks ago, we had some questions on getting work, and I, I want you to know I'm going to be addressing those on May 2nd. I apologize, it's taken me a while to get there, uh, but I had a, a piece of big news, which I still can't tell you guys for a few more weeks. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, pretty good stuff. So uh, 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 Jessica Dickerson will be here on May 2nd. And then on May 11th, we actually got a real special treat for you. Elaine Batzer is going to be coming down, flying down to Houston. She's coming down to Houston to see some family. Lucky us. Uh, Elaine has a super amazing program uh, up in uh, Massachusetts. And uh, I'm very excited that she's going to be here. And we're looking forward to having her 
come by and uh, talking with us too. So that, that's great stuff. Uh, did I miss any questions? Uh, Jared Graham at uh, 222. Would you categorize an ISP tech support job as a help desk job? No, no, not necessarily. Uh, you got to be really, Jared, for one thing, these names of jobs almost mean nothing. Uh, I, I, I don't even listen to these words very often. Uh, but uh, would, would I categorize it as a help desk job? Well, I mean, it's ISP support. It really, yeah, oh, I guess, yes. I guess I would characterize it as a help desk job, at least initially. Wilson's enjoying my N10008 book. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, Dave Rush at 223 put that Discord uh, invitation. Do check out that Discord channel, guys. We're, we're having a lot of fun in there. Uh, the big exclusive. Some companies don't want to hire people for entry-level roles without certifications, but it depends on the company. The big exclusive, I completely agree with you. There's, uh, there's almost, there, it, the, the problem we have like right now, especially in the United States, is that job demand is so insane right now that um, to me, the only people who aren't getting jobs right now are people who are too picky. The important thing, this, the, let's talk about the philosophy of working. This isn't even for IT. In my opinion, the most important thing you should be doing is working. You can always keep applying for that next job. In particular in IT, for your first three years in IT, it's very common for people to jump around. If I saw somebody with four jobs in three years, but it's the beginning of their career, I wouldn't even blink. I wouldn't even blink. It's very, very common for people to get out there, get work, but you're still looking, you know, maybe tweaking out your search for, you know, whatever potential job you want, but you gotta work, okay? And uh, when I hear people, they are not getting jobs right now, and I start talking to them, they're all of a sudden, it's like, well, you know, I have a medical condition, which is tough, but you know, it makes it harder to get a job. I have very specific hours. I won't work weekends. I'm not going to move out of teeny little town in the middle of Nevada that nobody's around. I mean, those are the things that usually run into it. I must have a remote job. Um, remote jobs are great people, but there's not a lot of entry level jobs that are remote, mainly because when you're entry level, people need to be watching what you're doing so you don't burn things down. What did Trey Dilla do that's so good? I missed it. Hey, Mike, I got the technical support. Oh, you got it. Trey Dilla, outstanding. Entry level position interview is mostly. Dude, Trey Dilla, and here's the funny part is, interview is mostly customer service questions. And man, that's because the hardest thing for a lot of these entry level jobs is finding somebody who will at least talk to people. And uh, I'm not surprised that you got a lot of those types of questions. So, but the important thing is you're working, doing great. That's the important thing. <laughs> David Mohan, David Mohan. Guys, we have a celebrity in our midst. It is my good friend, David Mohan. He's over in the UK. David Mohan invented the term, you ready? To be Mohaned. Dave, we give stuff away and David was, he's just, David is a great technician. And he won so many prizes that he basically broke the bank. And I'm like, eh, Dave, you don't get anything else. Uh, but Dave did invent, the, he, he coined, oh, I coined the term, but he inspired the coinage of to be Mohaned is to win too many prizes here on the Total Seminars channel, and I cut you off. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, I'm a little weak on GPG, to be honest with you. There, Dave, Dave Rush has some interesting information on it. Okay, thanks a lot, Mike. One more question. I'm confused between SSH and SSL. Do these both use private, public and private keys? Sort of. <laughs> they both use asymmetric encryption, okay? Uh, SSL is the first name for the first generation of 
encryptions that were primarily invented for web pages. If you go back into the later 80s, when we first started to think the web pages are going to be more than hyperlinks, we had to come up with some tool set to encrypt stuff. And um, SSL, oh, I don't remember what SSL stands for. Dave, what does SSL stand for? I forget. Um, see, I tell you, I don't care about what acronyms stand for. Um, with, with, with SSL, what you would have is you'd have a web server, for example, and a web browser. So SSL was a protocol suite which allowed these two devices to communicate with each other to set up and encrypt. It's basically a tunnel. I mean, uh, I mean, it's not like a VPN tunnel, but to me it's a tunnel. Uh, I guess it's not a tunnel in that you don't have uh, packets in them, they're packets. Anyway, the bottom line is SSL, in an SSL scenario, and by the way, SSL is pretty much dead. We use something called TLS now, but they're a lot the same, is it was a negotiation tool to determine how you're going to set up the encryption. You guys got to remember, when you're setting up a web server and a web browser to talk in an encrypted manner, really the only thing that they need to do is exchange a symmetric key. Okay, the problem is, is how do you exchange a key without putting the key right out there where anybody can grab it? And the secret is, is you use some form of asymmetric encryption. That asymmetric encryption can manifest as a public and private key. It could manifest as a Diffie-Hulman. It could manifest as elliptic curve. And what, well, the, and what SSL did is it was a way for the web browser and the web server to negotiate to see what the web server and the web browser can do. And they most certainly included, among other things, public and private key is one of many ways that you could do it. And back in the old days, it wasn't a problem to use something like Diffie-Hellman or something like that, but those things started to get a little bit crackable. So by the early aughts, we were already switching to TLS uh, for most uh, secure HTTP sites. And even now today, we're moving away from, for example, uh, small certificates uh, like a 1,024-bit certificate, which would be a public-private key of 1,024 bits, and moving towards more aggressive, like electric, ECC elliptic curve cryptography. But the important thing here is that SSL in and of itself is not an encryption. SSL is a methodology which allows a server and a client to negotiate an encryption so they can exchange a symmetric key safely and then they just don't, they drop all the asymmetric stuff and they just start talking to each other with that one key. Uh, what was the other one? SSL. Oh, SSH. Uh, SSH. SSH uses a key, but it's a little bit of a different animal. Um, I've never seen a true certificate used with SSH. Generally what, and I'm not saying it doesn't, I'm just saying I haven't seen it. Uh, generally you have an SSH server, and keep in mind this is a completely different protocol, but it's, it's doing kind of a different job here. Uh, whereas SSL is just designed to allow two devices to exchange a, uh, a, a symmetric key. Uh, SSH, well, it's kind of the same thing in that it allows an SSH server, the first time you contact an SSH server, assuming you have a username and password on that server, it will toss you, a, a in essence, a, a public key. And it's an SSH key, and it, it's, it, is, it is asymmetric, but it ain't a certificate. So I hope that helps. <laughs> Secure sockets layer. Thank you, Dave. Mm -mm -mm. How are we doing on time? Ah, 234. We got, there's some stuff I want to give away here. Patricia Grace, good to see you. Ronan Reads. Hello, sir. I'm struggling to understand subnetting for Network Plus. Okay. Uh, Ronan, we've got, I've done a number, uh, we did like three or four, about a year and a half ago uh, here on the channel, we did a bunch on subnetting and they're great. I'm, I'm real proud of how those turned out because most important, Ronan, what we did in these series is I kept giving you practice questions and we run over them over and over again. Please just do a search right here in the Total Seminars channel. Look up subnetting. You can find those, uh, find those links. Dave Rush actually even gave you a link. Um, 
and it starts in uh, something called CIDR, C-I-D-I, well, CIDR, sure, part one, and uh, please check that out. Watch those videos, and if you still have problems, I think you're gonna like them because we basically, I show you the types of questions that you're gonna see. Obviously, I don't know the exact questions. Wouldn't I wouldn't even do that if I knew the exact questions, but I give you the, the style of the questions, which I think is what most people wanna learn. And uh, the one thing I will give you a clue is that there's no IPv6 subnet, it's all IPv4, which it's a little bit of a different animal with IPv6. I mean, it's the exact same thing, but some of the little tricks that we play are a little different. Uh, it's dirtier. Lactose intolerant can't work near bakeries or dairies. Mm -mm -mm. Supersonic light speed. Tell what? Always secure sockets. Everybody, everybody was from when I was trying to remember what the heck SSL was. Mars Monster, I just had an interview for a help desk position at a casino here in Washington. Washington State, I assume. Uh, Mars Monster, I was just in Washington State last year, man. I was up in, what's that uh, super famous national park in the northwest corner of Washington State? It's like the uh, rainforest out there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Beautiful, beautiful state. I love Washington. All right, I got one funny Washington State story. You ready? So um, wa uh, Seattle, the Seattle area is very rainy and cloudy. And people who live in Seattle, they point at clouds a lot. Like, do you see those clouds over there? That's Mount Rainier. Do you see those clouds over there? That's the Olympic Range. So they pound, and here, me, I'm just a flatlander. I'm like, I see clouds. Here you guys go. If you ever go to Seattle, here's a term you need to know. Are you ready? Oh, look, the mountain is out. What they're trying to tell you is that it's one of those rare days where it's sunny and you can actually see the mountains. So they say the mountain's out. So I was in Seattle. I wasn't even in Seattle. I was way south of Seattle in a little town called Puyallup. Don't ask me how to spell it. So we're, Mount Rainier is way south of Seattle, so we're getting pretty close to Mount Rainier. And the mountain was out. I live in a swamp. Houston is a swamp. We have our idea of a mountain is an overpass, right? And I'm so not programmed to look for a mountain. I'm like, I don't see. It. Oh God! I mean, it was the mountain. It was Mount Rainier is kind of perfectly triangular shaped, and I'm looking. I don't. The thing was like. Oh my God, I fall backwards. All the locals are laughing their rear ends off. The mountain is out. Yeah, yeah. I got a lot of jokes about Washington, but one of my exes is from Washington. Ah, funny story. David Mohan still waiting. Are you kidding? David, I, I don't believe you. You're, you're still waiting for the t-shirt? David, why are you telling me this now? The guy says I got more schmutz on my ear. Sorry, I had a headset on. David, Mo God bless it. Hang on a second, guys. I got to deal with David here for a second. David Mohan, please send me one. Whoop, that's the wrong one. Uh, hang on. I made, I made these t-shirts. I've got one myself. Uh... <laughs> There we go. Let's get this right. Yeah, there we go. David, send me one more email. We'll, we'll get that t-shirt. I can't believe this was a year and a half ago. All right. Sorry about that, David. I apologize. Uh, we were having all kinds. I remember having all kinds of mailing problems, but I thought we had it right. David, I probably have all your shipping information, but please go ahead and send it to me one more time just to so I don't have to keep asking for it. I have really apologized, David. I mean, David invented to be Mohan, so I made him a nice t-shirt. Oh, well. I need to pull, pull one out, David, so you can at least see what they look like. They're fun. Uh, Connor Wellman, everybody asked me, what is your opinion of PF Sense? And is there a better uh, option for an open source firewall? Connor, I gotta tell you, I have no problem with PFSense at all. I just never use it. Uh, it's not that I don't need it. 
Well, it's, it's not that I don't want it. I don't have a good excuse for not using PFSense. I'd get a couple questions on it and I'd lit one up. Uh, there's so many open source firewalls anymore. Like what's the default open source firewall? It even comes with like Ubuntu. I don't even remember the name of the thing. Uh, and I understand open source. Actually, you know what? I'm going to defer this one because I haven't been doing this for a while. Let's see what Dave Rush and... Uh, oh, they already did. <laughs> uh, again, I have no problem with PFSense, but Dave Rush is recommending UFW and... Ooh, IP tables? Really? Okay. Dave's going old school here with IP tables. The only problem I would have with IP tables, and Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, is that is completely a... Uh, what you do we call it? English is not my first language today. It'll come back to me in a minute. And then also uncomplicated firewall. Dave, is uncomplicated firewall the name of a firewall? Or are you simply mentioning that those are... Uh... I know uh, Dave... So guys, just so you know, Dave Rush, one of our administrators, we have a little side channel here. Dave Rush is saying IP... Uh, yeah, but the problem is it's not, it's the IP tables is only stateless. Uh, unless IP tables had some major upgrades that makes it stateful, it's only a stateless firewall, which is my only downside to it, which is where somebody like PFSense would be a little bit better. Ah, UFW stands for Uncomplicated Firewall. I'm going to have to defer to Dave. I've not heard of this one, but Dave's pretty good at this stuff. So Dave says, check out Uncomplicated Firewall, UFW. And he claims that both of them have stateless functions. So there you go. Uh, Don Odinga. Also, Mike, can I get the certificate from Ud Udemy? No. You can get the training from Udemy, but in order to get the certificate, you have to take an exam. And you'll take that exam uh, uh, through uh, CompTIA administers these exams. So when you when you go through a cert uh, a course on Udemy, you might get a certificate, but that's just a certificate of course completion. That is not the actual certification. Do not confuse the two. And honestly, Don, that's where the money is spent. You, you got to pay for those things. Oh, this thing scrolls so. Johnny Five at uh, 232. Hey, Mike, is it possible to find the web address for a new TP Link wireless network card on Windows OS if that makes sense? Sure. Uh, the, the thing you got to remember is that we have so many devices that are out there that have a uh, built-in default address that uh, the first, and this, this isn't just for a TP-Link device. This could be for anything. If somebody hands you a, some kind of, you know, IoT device and you want to get access to it, I mean, you're going to have to look at the device. Number one, find the serial number, okay? Uh, get the model, I'm sorry, the model number and look it up. They're all, the default IP addresses are on there. If you can't ping it with that, then do a factory reset to find it. The other thing you can do is there's a bunch of tools out there. Um, uh, Angry IP Scanner is an ancient tool. It's 20 years old, but it still works great on IPv4 networks. Angry IP Scanner. And just run that on your network and let it query all the devices on your network. It's free. Uh, and uh, that that's, would probably be a better way to do it. Also, most versions of Windows, all you have to do is go into your network settings, and a lot of times if there's devices it can see, then it's just going to go ahead and see that. Now, keep in mind, this assumes that the device has been configured for your network. So let's say your network is 10.11.12 WAC24. 
So if that device, if that TP-Link device has got a 10.11.12 WAC 24 address, it probably ought to be showing up even just in Windows or run angry IP scanner, it shows up there. If it's not showing up, A, make sure it works, right? <laughs> Does it have electricity and have you plugged it into the network? And if it's wireless, you're probably just, you know, most wireless device, there's, uh, there's two ways to configure a wireless device. Number one, plug it in. That assumes that that wireless device also has an ethernet connection, which a lot of them don't. Or number two, set it to a factory reset, whatever the device is. And then there's usually a phone app nine times out of 10. And that device, when you set it to its factory wirelessly, it will make its own little wireless network and will temporarily pop a default um, SSID and you need to download whatever configuration app it needs and then run it and then you're in good shape. So hopefully that helps. People keep talking to me even during a thing. <laughs> No, <laughs> Mars Monster, the HOH Rainforest. That's it. Thank you, Mars Monster. I'd forgotten it. It was a beautiful place. Washington State is absolutely gorgeous in the summertime. I'm the guy that you live five minutes from Puyallup. Oh, man. Mars Monster, we could probably talk and talk. It, 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 pronouncing it Washington instead of Washington. Well, a, look, guys, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. And in the Midwest of America, we pretty much replace all the O's with A's and the A's with O's. 10 minute mark? Oh, goodness, we are already short on time. Oops, oops, oops. Okay. Uh, let me try to do one real, uh, run wheel about 4K. This man's the OG. Ah, thanks. Uh, Don Odinga, Mike, how does BGP and OSPF work together? They don't. In fact, that's a big mistake. I, I, I don't know why OSPF is losing popularity. It's a great protocol. It takes a little understanding of configuration. I'll understand that. BGP is in my opinion, kind of, st I would rather config, Ooh, don't lie. I was about to lie. I'm going to back up. I was about to say, I was about to say, I would rather configure BGP than RIP. That's actually not true. But, um, I, uh, but, but, uh, BGP, uh, BGP is not a, uh, a border protocol. I'm sorry. OSPF is not a border protocol. That is an internal protocol. It, sh it, it should never be put out, out from your edge. Only BGP, that's all we use at your edge anymore. <sighs> okay. Guys, we are running short on time. Let's go ahead and uh, let's have a quick contest. We're about to, anybody want some free stuff? Um, you know what? <laughs> One moment, please. We're about to have a competition, folks, and this is unfortunate. Uh, we're gonna have to stop with this one. Uh, but anyway, so let us begin our competition for free practice questions. Folks, here's how this works. In a second, I'm gonna put up a, uh, in a second, I'm gonna put up a multiple choice question up on the screen. The first person who answers the question, who isn't David Mohan, <laughs> David, it's just good to see you. You've been gone for so long, we missed you. All the plants are dying. Uh, the first person to answer the question right wins 90 day access to the practice questions of their choice. A plus, net plus, security plus, IT fundamentals. We got tons of them, all kinds of different stuff. And you get to pick whatever you want. Um, uh, and, uh, but you have to win the contest. So a couple of rules. Rule number one, this contest is not fair. I would like it to be fair, but I'm not smart enough to come up with a way to make it really fair. 
Number two, just because you think you were the first person to put in the answer, that doesn't mean that that's what shows up on me or Andrew or Dave's screen, okay? So don't get all salty on me if you think, I had, I had the right answer. The other thing is, is if you win a lot, you might, you may be, we call it, I'm going to call it the soft Mohan, which means I've already chosen, you've won too many times, so you don't get to win anymore. We haven't made it official yet. Uh, also, the last thing is, is don't just type A, B, C, or D. I tried that years ago and I had a bunch of people typing A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, all right? You have to type enough of it so I understand what the problem is, what the answer is. So, with all of those rules, I say we should begin. You guys ready? Okay, here we go. Oh, I, I, it's an A plus question. And I hate these questions, but man, if you're studying for A plus, you gotta know this stuff. You guys ready? A plus, troubleshooting theory. Bum, 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 here we go. First person to put in the right answer wins. According to the CompTIA A plus troubleshooting methodology, at what point during the troubleshooting process should you back up the computer? When identifying the problem, establishing a plan of action, testing the theory, uh, establish a theory of probable cause. All right, folks, start typing them in there, man. I'm giving everybody a minute to type some stuff in. Give everybody a couple more moments. I forgot. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I don't remember the answer to this. All right, so I'm gonna guess and see if I can get it right. So don't tease me too much, guys. It's been a while. All right, so let's see. At what point, an identifying, establishing a plan? It's gotta be establishing a plan of action. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah! Testing the theory? <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. I don't remember this dumb, I hate these questions, but CompTIA asks these, a lot of them, they do it on the, a plus, on the network plus two. I'm not gonna let you guys watch me because if I'm, I've already tried two and I'm wrong, can't be that. It is. Are you having fun at my expense? I would be. All right, it seems that the answer, the correct answer is A when identifying the problem. By the way, folks, this is actually the total tester tool. A is correct. <laughs> uh, all right, so it's A when identifying the problem. Oh, you guys are just having a little heyday right now at my expense. All right, uh, I'm looking through. In fact, I'm just gonna, what? I, I, we got a lot of answers, and uh, so I'm not sure uh, which ones, so, uh, wait a minute. All right, I'm gonna look. Dave Rush, Andrew Hutz, help me find a winner real quick. We're running short on time for the day. It was when identifying the problem. I say it's a, the, uh, there's a person here called Jack. And uh, Jack, I'm gonna declare you the winner just cause we're running short on time. It looks like you were the first person. Jack, congratulations to you. You have won 90 day free access to the total tester practice questions of your choice. Congratulations to you, sir. Now Jack, in order to claim your prize, you've got to jump through one little hoop. Jack, what I need you to do is send an email to my buddy Dave Rush. That's Dave R at totalsem.com. Jack, in that email, number one, I need your YouTube name. Your YouTube name is Jack. How do you get a YouTube name like Jack? Were you like the third person on YouTube for crying out loud? Um, 
Next, I need you to put your email address. But Mike, I'm sending you an email, just use the return address. No, I need you to write in the email address. And then number three, Jack, just tell us which practice exam you want and we'll be more than glad to send those to you. Jack, congratulations to you. Also do keep in mind, Jack, that we've put all the instructions also in the chat window. So if I said that too fast, don't panic. It's all going to be there for you. So good luck and, and congratulations to you, Jack. You don't know Jack. Sorry, I just, was just laying there, I had to do it. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, wrap it up for the day. Uh, yeah, guys, I know a lot of y'all hate those kind of questions, but if you're gonna be taking a CompTIA A+, or a CompTIA Network Plus, you need to memorize those steps. And they're different from A plus to Net plus because CompTIA is evil, that's why. Anyway, folks, uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for the day here. It's just about three o'clock right now. Folks, thank you so much for attending today. Do check out the Discord channel. Don't forget we got the 50% discount. I will be at, back on this Wednesday. And don't forget on Fridays, we always have Dave Rush with his Dave Rush AMA or DRAMA, better known as Drama. Uh, and it's a lot of fun for there as well. And that's all right here. It's always at two o'clock Central Daylight Time, right here on the Total Seminars channel, right here on YouTube. Until then, this is your little Uncle Mikey saying, Bye-bye, kids. I hope I can log out. This is going to be interesting because I can't even see. So I may log out a little on the early side.